Hey guys, thanks for watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host Kyle Brotherson. How often are you setting your sag? Maybe you're not setting your sag because it's kind of hard because you need at least like two helpers to help you to do it right. Today we're going to review this product here. I'm going to show you at least this product. This is the Motul Digital Sag Scale. It's called the Slacker and this thing allows you to set your sag alone. I've done it a couple times on this bike, I've done it a couple times on another bike, and I think this is a pretty cool tool and we're going to get into it right now. Let's take a look and see what comes in the kit. This is the Motul Digital Sag Scale. They call it, they call it the uh, Slacker. Uh, this is the version 2 of this thing. They sell these things for about 150 bucks over at Motul.com. Uh, I'll put up the... Uh, I'll put the link in here. In fact, it might be motool.co, I can't remember. Anyway, I'll put the link down in the, in the description. This is what you get. You get your instructions, you get the actual sag scale tool here. You can turn this on and you'll see, okay, we're at zero and as, as I extend this, you know, you'll see the readout start to change. We'll see how that works on the bike. Uh, so you've got that, hooks on via magnet. Uh, you've got the clip to be able to hook this on to your bike on the plastic. I'll show you that in just a second. And then you've got your remote display here that you'll hook on. Uh, if you need a refresher on how to set the sag on your bike, I've got a video on my channel here that can show you how to do that. I'm not going to delve into that too much today, but suffice it to say that uh, this is a sag scale and this is a very useful tool in order, to set, in order to set sag. But with this tool, you need at least one helper and that's if you can balance your own self up on a wall while you're on the bike while the other person is back here reading the readout on your scale but a lot of times you'll need two helpers, one to steady the bike, one to then do the readout. And so a lot of times it, it's like kind of an arduous task to be able to set your sag. Well, gone are those days. Now we've got this digital sag scale, which we'll just, you know, place here back on our axle and then attach this to a point up on the bike. Now they recommend that you use a, use an arc. For instead of just going on a straight line up here, they want you to use the arc of your swing arm. And the way that you do that is you take the, you take the pivot point on your swing arm up here where it pivots, which is right there. And I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use the wire here for my, uh, my remote display. I'm going to come back here to the center line of my axle. And then I'm going to just take this arc up here and kind of get, get, get a good idea of where that is. So I'm gonna come out here, and I know it's just on this one, it's about an inch down from where that, uh, where that bend is. So this is where I'm going to want to mark, I'm gonna to wanna to take my measurement from, is right here. So I'm gonna take this and put it there. And the point is that we wanna get just a, a repeatable measurement from, from that point. So the distance from here to here isn't super critical. What we want though is to make sure that we're going on this arc. And now I want to align the tool so that this is going to be straight up and down and it's be able to come, come into this. So we're, we're taking a measurement here on the arc of our swing arm like that and I've turned on the sag scale and I've got it zeroed out. As, this, as I take this off the stand, we'll be able to see our static sag on the bike and our race sag. Let's take a look and see how we put our remote display on. I'm just going to plug in the uh, cable here and then I'll plug it into this side of this guy, as you can see like that, and then turn, turn this on and you'll see that these things are going to give the same exact readout. So just your remote, remote display up here on the handlebars is going to give the same readout that you could get down here back on the swing arm. Now I'm going to take my remote display and hook it up here on the handlebars. This allows me to be able to do the sag alone without having any helpers. And I'll just take my, I'm going to take the cable here and just put it behind my kickstand, kind of hook it up on my under my seat so that it's out of my way so I can get up on and off the bike without disturbing that. So now we're good to go. We're, we're ready to take a look at our sag. I'll just carefully pull the bike off the stand. I want to be, I want to be careful that I, that I don't disrupt my, my uh, sag scale down here on the swing arm or on my axle. So I'm just going to carefully lift it off like that and set it down. And now we can get an idea for what our static sag is here. I'm going to put, 
Uh, I'm gonna put the bike on the kickstand so I can move this over and show you. Okay, now stand the bike back up. And this is reading here. Hopefully you can see this. This would be the benefit of having two people to help me film or a person to help me film. But it's showing that I've got 33 millimeters of static sag. I'm just gonna let the bike come compress it, come up, come under its own power there, come up on, under its own power rather. And I've got 35 millimeters. Just do that one more time. Let that come up. 35 millimeters of static sag. That's what I've got with this bike right now in its current configuration. So this bike is going to need to be between, you know, 30 and 35 ish of sag, static sag, and it keeps coming right back repeatable to uh, 35 millimeters on this guy. Okay, so here's where this gets pretty cool. I've got my remote display up here on the handlebars. Everything is set up. Now it's showing me I've got 33 millimeters of static sag, and there's 35 again as soon as I, as soon as I push down. So if I was gonna actually take a, a realistic measurement of my sag, I would need to be fitted out in all my gear. I'm talking riding boots, riding pants, any, any like you know chest protectors that you use, neck braces, your helmet, all of that stuff. I always wear a backpack when I'm riding with water in it and tools, and so I'll put that exact backpack on with the same water loadout and everything that I'm normally using, so I'm fully geared out. Obviously, I'm not geared out right now because this is just for demonstration purposes, but this is what you do. When I'm alone, I've got the bike right up next to the wall, and it's so close to the wall that all I have to do is put my hand, my, this hand out here and just kind of make a fist, and I can balance my, whoops, I can balance myself now on the wall and keep all my weight on the bike. So now I'm able to, you know, give the suspension a little, a little bit of a, a bump here like that, and then it come, let it relax and come back up to its natural position. And it's saying I've got 93 millimeters of sag. Now that's, that's less sag than I want on this bike. I've got this thing, I've got it over there. I've got it set to where I've got 105 uh, when I'm sitting and I'll sit down and I'll have 105 millimeters, that's what I've got. But when I'm standing up in my attack position, I've got about 100 and, I mean, I've got about what, 97 is, is what I'm on, somewhere, somewhere right in there, about 100. So I'm 100 when I'm in, a in, a, in an attack position and I'm about 105 when I've, sit, when I've sat down. It's a fine tune adjustment, but the thing that I love about this is now you, I'm in complete control and I can do my own sag without having to have people help me and I can get an accurate, repeatable measurement that is so, so awesome to have. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set my, I'll look at my sag, what it's like when I'm up in my attack position, let the bike settle under, its, uh, under the suspension like this, take a look, okay, here's what it is. I'll sit down in you know, a forward position or in a natural position, see what it's there, and then I'll wanna get kind of an average of the two. Take a look at how cool this thing is, guys. I'm holding this just so you can get a good angle and you can see it on the camera. But with me sitting on the bike, obviously I'm not wearing my full kit. So normally I'd have more sag than this because I'd be weighing more. Um, but all I'm doing is sitting on the bike and I've got 95 millimeters of sag. Now watch how much this changes. If I shift my weight forward, I'm not even gonna move my butt on the seat. I'm at 93, so my sag went down. Now if I shift my weight back, it's all the way up to 199 millimeters of sag just by me shifting my weight forward and back. So you can see how much of a difference this makes. Now, I'll stand up and I'll give the, I'll give the bike a couple of bounces, balancing myself with my fist off the, off, the, off the wall here, and I can see I've got 93 millimeters of sag when I'm in the standing position, in this position. So I'll try that again, see if I can get a repeatable measurement. Yeah, 92, 93 millimeters. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and sit down in like a normal position on the bike and I've got now 95 millimeters of sag. And if I shift my weight back, I can go to 100. If I shift my weight forward, I can go to 91. So the cool thing is you can kind of get an average of yourself standing and sitting and figure out exactly where your sag is and take an average. You might, you might be at you know, 100 millimeters when you're standing and then you might be at 108 when you're sitting. And so I would say, okay, you're probably right around 100, 105. You gotta average that out. And this, and this Motul SAG scale gives you the ability to know exactly where you're at. And I just love this thing. It's pretty dang cool. A lot of people ask me if a tool is worth it, if the price is worth it, and at 150 bucks, I say this is worth it. And the reason why I say that is because I like to know what my sag is. I set my sag on every bike and I want to check it more regularly, but this, it's always been something that I've always got to get help with my wife and my, you know, my kids or a buddy or someone to come out and help me. And I don't need to do that anymore. And so a one-time purchase for a tool like this, and if I take care of it, it's gonna last me for 
years and years and years and I can set up dozens of different bikes and I don't need help. And so yes, I think it is worth it. I love this tool and I'm using it on all the bikes that come through here. So two thumbs up for me on this thing. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, I've got links to this uh, item down in the description of the video. If you like what we're doing, please remember to like these videos, subscribe to the channel. Also make sure that YouTube is giving you the notifications about my videos. You got to go to my page, my YouTube page and go up onto that ringing bell. You need to make sure that the bell is ringing so that you're getting notifications about my new videos. So anyway, Thanks for tuning in guys and uh, check out this tool. It's pretty sweet. Hey guys, if you didn't already know, Patreon is the best way to support Dirt Bike Channel. We've got some really cool rewards over there. So click on the link up here that you see to become a patron. That'll take you directly to our site and you can check everything out. Uh, you can donate as little as $1 per month and it would really, really help us out. Thanks a ton guys.